Jake and Emily, the two roaming souls, and if you missed our last video, we hopped on a plane and headed to Southeast Asia. First stop was Northern Vietnam, where we explored the city of Hanoi and the Northeast Coast. In this video, we hop on our first overnight train and head west into the mountains. At sunrise, we finally make it to the city of Sapa, but we actually had about a 30 minute drive up into the mountains. Our taxi driver dropped us off and told us this was as far as he could take us. He kind of just pointed the general direction of our hotel and then left. Luckily, trusty Google Maps led us to our location. We just made it to our homestay in Safa. Uh, our view from our room, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So we took the overnight train last night and I think we actually really liked it. Um, Cause you know, it was like eight hours on the train and we got on it at like 10 PM. So we sort of just like went to sleep and got mostly a, a full night's sleep. A lot bumpier than I expected for a train and the beds were kind of hard. And 5'8 is probably about the maximum height for you to actually like fit, but uh, that works for us. And yeah, we basically didn't lose like a whole day to traveling here. Uh, got here in the morning. We actually got here almost too early because we had to wait to check into our hotel. But um, we are checked in now and uh, it's beautiful. So we don't really have a plan today, but we're just walking around exploring Sapa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's really touristy, but we are tourists, so and it's a lot less hectic than Hanoi, but still like a lot of restaurants and shops and stuff. And we just love mountain views, so we're into it. <laughs> spent most of our time here just trying to find Bon Mies. You wouldn't be surprised how hard it is. It should be everywhere, but I don't know. We strike out a lot. We headed back to our hotel to hopefully catch a nice sunset from our balcony. place has been a party since we checked in at noon. Then it was time for dinner and by now you could say we were craving something other than Vietnamese food. We basically haven't had cheese since we've gotten here. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> The next morning, we set off on a trekking tour down into the Mung Hoa Valley. This area is home to the Hmong people, an ethnic minority group separate from both the Chinese and the Vietnamese people. They have their own language, customs, and way of life. 
They are even shorter than Vietnamese people and always have a smile on. But despite their size, the Hmong people are masters of rice terrace farming and mountainous terrain. And they are also known for weaving colorful patterned textiles. Everything from blankets and scarves to headbands and ceremonial outfits. But they've also come to realize that there's pretty good money in guiding tourists like us on trekking tours. So we made it to the bottom of the valley here. There's a village and we're going to get lunch here. Uh, we only have one guide, but there's kind of a bunch of other uh, ladies who just tag along. I'm trying to sell you things. Yeah, kind of trying to get some money out of us, which is... I just don't have any room in my suitcase. Yeah. I packed too heavily. Yeah. And the local kids trying to sell you bracelets. We politely declined. Mm -hmm. Okay, we made it back to our room, and uh, it's been kind of cloudy up at the top of the mountains, but right now you can actually see almost the whole top in Fancy Pan, the tallest mountain in Vietnam. I was like just trying to shoot a video this morning of how foggy it was. You like couldn't see a thing. And I was looking at, at the glass door and then I opened it and all of a sudden you could see everything. Really cool. But anyway, there was a high forecast for rain today. Uh, and we're also changing accommodations. So we're just gonna use today as like kind of a, a work day. Get some work done, change over to the new place, maybe do some laundries for the first time since we got here. Uh, but then the next two days look to be sunny and we'll do some more adventuring then. Just checked into our new hotel for the next two nights, the Viet Trekking Homestay. We noticed there's a lot of things that are called homestay that I find to be in no way like a homestay. It's just like a hotel. And we're realizing how lucky we were with that last room. This one basically doesn't have a window. <laughs> Beautiful. We're feeling a little guilty because the weather ended up being way better than we were expecting today. Yeah, today was supposed to be like the rainy day. But we got to work on our business at some point. So we said we were doing it today, so we're sticking to it. And uh, there are worse places to work remotely from. This morning, really sunny day, and we booked a taxi that's going to take us to around to a couple cool waterfalls. A tram con pass? Yeah, there's a big mountain pass up over that way, and it uh, looks like good weather, so it should be awesome. So we just got dropped off at Silver Waterfall. Honestly, didn't know what to expect. Kind of thought it was a roadside uh, waterfall. But now we're just climbing up those stairs.
Okay, we just got dropped off at Love Waterfall, and I believe it's like a mile hike to the waterfall. Um, round trip? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's kind of a nice paved path. So, cool. That was a nice little adventure day, seeing some waterfalls and the really awesome mountain views. Yeah, I think the waterfalls were definitely worth it. Yeah. They were like pretty reasonably priced. Pretty much everything was set up to be like extremely Instagrammable, <laughs> <laughs> like with like hanging swings and like little doorways and all those like stairway to heaven things, which definitely should not have been open right now considering <laughs> it was blowing like 60 miles an hour. I was too terrified to go on it, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was really cool. A little I mean, bummed that we had to pay for each thing along the way, but. I think it would be really fun if you took like a motorbike, but neither of us have experience really with motorbikes, so they didn't really suggest that option. Yeah, they said they were like rough mountain roads, which isn't really true. They're steep, but they were paved. Like, I think that would've been fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It was... Overall, a good day. Now we're ready to relax for a little bit. Or get some food. <laughs> So it's kind of pricey, at least by Vietnam standards. It's like 82 bucks for two people to ride the, the little train and then take the cable car up to the top. And then we're gonna walk the last little bit.
Oh, we made it. We learned during our trip that winter isn't really the best time to visit Sapa, or Vietnam in general. The winter brings more seasonal air pollution, which lowers visibility and makes it harder to breathe. And also, the rice paddies are not in full swing. Seeing this area overflowing with greenery would have made it that much more spectacular. So if we were to come back, our guides advised us that fall is the ideal time of year. Thanks for coming along on another Two Roaming Souls adventure. If you enjoy our Southeast Asia videos, be sure to subscribe because next week we're headed to Ninh Binh. Woo!